We were never alone at the Christmas dinner table. There were my parents and me, accompanied by the ghosts of grandparents, aunts, renegade uncles and deviant cousins, who all arrived somewhere between the main course and the plum pudding. Invoked by my father's stories, long departed friends would saunter in straight from the world of spirit and sit casually with us. Oh yes, my dad's emotions would come alive as he remembered and his eyes would fill up with tears and how those tears used to embarrass me when I was growing up. Christmas Day was indeed a day of ghosts and memories. While my mother and I tended to the practical details, my father could be heard saying things like, there it is all over for another year, all the rushing and fussing, or many a turkey has gone to its glory by now, and he'd look at the sinking head in his glass of stout. To build on the morose, he always finished Christmas Day with an improvisation on A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. With Arthur Guinness as muse and my mother as silent witness to emotion and excess, my father, in a space that I venture to call transcendental, would absent himself from the dinner table. He would reappear from the shadows and would launch into a one-man production. He acted his way wow. through Scrooge, Bob Cratchit, Tiny Tim, and the ghosts of Christmas past, present Christmas and time past. to come. Once, I remember him slipping outside the front door to bang on the knocker, much to the horror of my mother who, let's say, was not given to dramatics of any sort, least of all in her husband. The ghost of Marley might well have fled in equal horror on seeing her face. My own Christmas table has as many guests as memories, and as the evening shadows fall after the dinner, I play through the ritual of remembering those who have left us and have come back, beckoned by a word or some other reminder. A name, a glimpse inside some neighbour's window, or simply the line of a long forgotten carol. I do not call them by name for fear of seeming too caught up in the past. But I suppose it's in my blood this leaning towards the romantic and maybe the morose. There comes a moment, late, every Christmas evening, when I hear my father say in a voice of aged innocence, the ran boys will be here in the morning at the crack of dawn, a pause and then, the 6th of January is only around the corner and we'll be seeing the cock step in the evening. The days will be getting longer and sure, we won't know ourselves till it's Easter again. Silence, and he continues. Do you know, Easter, I prefer it. A time of hope, new things, and silence again. As midwinter darkness once again engulfs our lengthening days, a Christmas card falls off the mantelpiece. The candles burn low spitting dying flames in defiance of the dark. I look around and in the shadows I see my dad, sprawled in his armchair, one hand loosely clutching the Christmas number of Ireland's own. A faint but well-intentioned snore is rising from his mouth. Yes, Christmas Day is well and truly over once again and my father has become a shadow of his former self. He's a happy ghost with just a hint of a smile on his face.